Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Order of the Phoenix, the Death Eaters, and the Battle of the Department of Mysteries. This battle was one of the most important in this series, and one of the most action-packed on screen. It was also quite tragic, as it highlighted Sirius Black's last moments, first being struck by a curse from Bellatrix, and then falling into the Veil. The Department of Mysteries is on level 9 of the Ministry of Magic, and this department is responsible for studying the mysteries of the Wizarding World, mysteries associated with love, space, thought, time, and death, among other things. But perhaps most importantly, within the walls of the Department of Mysteries lies the Hall of Prophecy. They were there. They had found the place, high as a church and full of nothing but towering shelves, covered in small, dusty glass orbs. They glimmered dully in the light issuing from more candle brackets set at intervals along the shelves. Like those in the circular room behind them, their flames were burning blue. The room was very cold, and it was in the Hall of Prophecy that Harry Potter, among others, were suddenly faced with a horde of Death Eaters, and the battle that would ensue would be the first major conflict of the Second Wizarding War. Harry was lord to the Department of Mysteries by Voldemort, who sought to come into the possession of a prophecy that foretold his defeat at the hands of Potter. When Harry, Ron, Hermione, Neville, Ginny, and Luna showed up, Death Eaters were waiting for them, and the fight began. The Order of the Phoenix show up later to help fight alongside Dumbledore's army, but one thing that I've always found peculiar is six Hogwarts students were able to fight off some of the Dark Lord's most powerful servants. They were outnumbered, and honestly, if you factor in that Death Eaters like Bellatrix and Dolohov were there, outclassed. Harry put his ear close to the door to listen, and heard Lucius Malfoy roar. Leave not, leave him, I say. The Dark Lord will not care for Knott's injuries as much as losing that prophecy. Jugson, come back here. We need to organize. We'll split into pairs and search. And don't forget, be gentle with Potter. Until we've got the prophecy, you can kill the others if necessary. Bellatrix, Rodolphus, you take the left. Crab, Rabiston, go right. Jugson, Dolohov, the door straight ahead. McNair and Avery, through here. Rookwood, over there. Mulciba, come with me. Here we see, very clearly, that the Death Eaters were ordered to kill everyone, except for Harry. But from what we can extract from the text, the Death Eaters were very clearly using ineffective, non-fatal, and in some cases, silly spells. And what about Ron? said Harry fearfully, as Ron continued to giggle, still hanging off the front of Harry's robes. I don't know what they hit him with, said Luna sadly, but he's gone a bit funny. I could hardly get him along at all. Also, its owner was laying on his side, bleeding from the head, and his attacker was now bearing down upon Harry and Neville. Dolohov, his long pale face twisted with glee. Tarantelegra, he shouted, his wand pointing at Neville, whose legs went immediately into a kind of frenzied tap dance, unbalancing him and causing him to fall to the floor again. Now, Potter. So this begs the question, why are they holding back? Why are they using Tarantelegra and not Avada Kedavra? Crucio, aren't the Death Eaters stone cold killers? I think that there may be a few reasons for this. First of all, they were just kids, and I honestly think that the Death Eaters, knowing that they both outnumbered and outclassed the kids, held back a bit, because they were toying with them. Sure, the members of Dumbledore's army proved themselves as valiant fighters, but realistically, how could they expect to compete with vast numbers of superior witches and wizards? I think that they were casting spells like Tarant Allegra for a bit of a laugh, to have some fun. At that point in time, they didn't expect the Order of the Phoenix to show up, and would have likely felt quite comfortable. Additionally, Death Eaters are quite sadistic, so it's highly likely they would want to humiliate them before finishing them off. As I mentioned before, this was the first major conflict of the Second Wizarding War, and this would have been the first opportunity they had in a while to do what they love, battle. My next theory is that the Death Eaters used whatever spell was quick and accessible for them in the heat of battle. Channeling a spell like Avada Kedavra in the heat of the moment might not always be the best option, it was a fast-paced firefight that required split-second decisions, and they may have just cast whatever felt most natural for them. Sure, Tarant Allegra is silly, but it does serve a purpose, even if it's just a precursor to a spell that would serve as the finisher. We see this with Harry, who time and time again resorts to Expelliarmus, which is certainly not the most powerful spell in his arsenal. However, it clearly worked for him time and time again, as with it he was able to escape from the stickiest of situations. I honestly think that a lot of it comes down to convenience and comfort, use the spells that are guaranteed to work. What do you guys think? Why was an outnumbered Dumbledore's army able to fend off a plethora of Death Eaters? Let us know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry.